And I'm now joined by David Dr. David Kwok, I'm sorry, Dr. Kwok, okay. a clinical instructor specializing in family medicine at Sun Chan Yang University Hospital. Good morning, Dr. Kwok. Good morning. Uh, we have been having you in the studio every Monday, and uh, it seems like on a daily basis, we are getting bombarded with some new information or some new developments surrounding the coronavirus and issue. So it's been very helpful to have you in the studio and just pick through some of these. Some are myths, some are just kind of overblown uh, hopes, I think, sometimes as well. But um, So we've got a lot to cover today. And to our listeners, if you have some questions that you would like to ask Dr. Kwok, we welcome your questions and comments. So please send them into, once again, pound 113. That'll cost you 51 per message. Or just use our app or our live stream uh, chat as well. Um, over the past week, we've seen another sort of cluster infection with the Kupang. Um, fortunately, so far, it doesn't seem to have blown into a huge explosion that we thought um, mm-hmm. things are calming down. But I think it again brings to light the importance on, of keeping the guidelines that we've been told over and over. But it seems that uh, sometimes maybe we kind of think, oh, we're over the worst of it or um, it won't happen to me. We still have that sort of mentality. So right. we have seen these sporadic uh, group infections. So I wanted to start us off by talking about the guidelines um, on self-isolation and even testing as well, as mm-hmm. we see a lot more cases happening in the Seoul and metropolitan area. Mm-hmm. And again, we also hear that many have been asymptomatic. Let's talk about those recommendations once again, and if there's a need to maybe even update them as well. Um, so, so far, we have had lots of success in you know, those symptoms, whether you have a fever, the chills, mm-hmm. loss of sense of smell, or taste whatsoever. But I also wanted to mention again, um, there's always been that recommendation. If you do feel under the weather, Mm -hmm. stay home. Do not go to work. Do not go out and mingle with your friends. Just stay home for three to four days. Unfortunately, we did not see that among some of these sort of initial spreaders. Um, Could you once again tell our listeners why this is so important and why it's so important to stay home for those three or four days? Okay, let me start by uh, uh, bringing up a study that was done in China. Okay. Uh, uh, I was Uh, I believe it was published in uh, back in April. Mm -hmm. A study uh, uh, recorded that um, the the load of the virus inside the body was most detected just prior to the beginning of the symptom. Mm -hmm. Meaning if a person was to start having a symptom um, from then on, the, 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 the amount of virus that is being detected will gradually decrease. So it's at the time of the beginning of the symptom Mm -hmm. is probably the most um, vital or a pivotal point of infection, the infectiousness of a person that can infect others. Let me just say that again. So the study showed that um, the load of the virus that you have is actually more before you it's it's. It reaches kind of its peak before you start showing any symptoms. Just at the point right before the the uh, the started of the starting of the uh, the symptoms. So that's quite disturbing. So if you're mm-hmm. asymptomatic, you could still be potentially transmitting it to lots of people that and is infecting very other people. Correct. So the fact that if you start showing any symptoms and you stay home for three or four days, that will right. do a great deal, of course, in right. in preventing the spread. But in a way. You don't know whether you have anything or not because exactly. you have no symptoms. Exactly. So for, for that, I actually wanted to uh, point out uh, uh, something that uh, in my mind is differing from what the KCDC is stating. Okay. Um, I believe these, uh, the statement that, uh, that people have to stay three, four, three to four days uh, when they start having a symptom was sort of taken from CDC's guideline mm-hmm. from the United States. Right. Uh, I differ in my mind because of this study. Um, I, I believe if a person... Person was to suspect of any symptoms at all. Let's say scratchy throat, mm-hmm. uh, runny nose, mm-hmm. uh, any any mild um, symptoms that a person uh, is suspecting to have. I think they should just go straight to the hospital and be checked out uh, for the possibility of COVID nineteen. They should call first before well, they head course, over, yes, right, Doctor Kwok? Oh, 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 yes, of course. Call call the uh, one one three three. But does that mean that they will automatically get a free test? Will they be able to get a test very easily now? Is it um, relatively easy now to get a test? Because in the early days, I. Right. know that it was some of our writers had some difficulty Mm -hmm. getting tested at the first place they did go to. That's true. Um, So I guess, um, well, 
throughout the country, we all have the same protocol to follow, meaning if a person was to have a, a sus suspicious symptom of COVID-19, uh, he or she would be covered by the government for mm -hmm. the charges, for the testing. Uh, if a person wants to be tested uh, uh, to prove to others that th th they are negative, then they would have to pay out of their own pockets mm -hmm. uh, for the price. But uh, depending on their severity of symptoms and also Uh, the symptoms itself. If, if a person was to, let's say, go in uh, and wanted, wanting to be checked out for um, um, chest pain, mm -hmm. uh, he, he or she would obviously be covered by the government. But if she's just going in for, let's say... Um, Sneezing, right? That probably won't be covered. So it, it'll depend on the symptoms and also the severity of, of the symptoms that they're bringing. But of course, in. we are bombarded with those emergency sort of alerts. Very and true. they say um, there was a confirmed patient in this and this establishment and mm -hmm. this and these hours on these and these days. If you were there, you should get tested. Right. And that would again also be covered by the government. Absolutely. In, in any cases that are in vicinity to the, the geographical areas of the, the, the bombardment mm -hmm. of the cases, they, they should definitely go in and be checked out. One last thing. Um, what if you did go for a test and then it came out negative? Mm -hmm. But can you be positive? Could that be a false negative? And could you be positive later on? Should you get tested twice? That's actually a very good question. Uh -huh. uh, anybody who is having a symptom went in and be checked out uh, to be negative. If the symptom persists, let's say three, four days later, and he's, he or she is still having the symptom or mm -hmm. even a se more severe symptom, they should definitely go back in and get it checked out for the, uh, the second time. Yeah, in a couple of days. Yes. Just wait it out a couple of days, three or four days then. Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's say you, someone does have it. Um, most of us will suffer only mild symptoms. It won't be that serious. But for those who do have very serious symptoms, um, there's been a lot of buzz around a possible treatment, and that is remdesivir. We have mm -hmm. talked about it here mm -hmm. before. Um, developed by the U.S. company Gilead Sciences, originally to treat Ebola. Right. But um, because of its effectiveness, I guess, mm -hmm. somewhat proven um, in using for coronavirus, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration granted emergency use mm -hmm. of this remdesivir. Now, what does it mean for potential patients, I guess? And, and also, what does it mean for us here in Korea? Okay, so... Um And another study has been put out by uh, the, a, a very renowned publishing company called Nature. Uh, they uh, uh, had this um, study where they put remdesivir into many, many people. And mm -hmm. they found out that it actually decreased not just the days of the symptoms, the amount, uh, the length of the symptoms that the people were having, but it actually occurred that a uh, uh, mortality rate in some cases have significantly decreased uh, from, I believe, 11 point something percent to 7 point something percent. Wow. So that was actually a very significant amount of mm -hmm. uh, decrease in mortality. And it was uh, first ever any sort of medication or vaccination that have done so in, the, uh, in, in all the data that we have currently. So um, it, it, it is significant that uh, we have something in our hands finally to fight against the COVID-19. Um, now, that being said, um, the emergency use authorization done by FDA is where pro uh, the, all the usual process that, that, that the FDA put um, the pharmaceutical companies through to ha uh, have it available for the general population is all skipped mm -hmm. at this point mm -hmm. because we are faced with all these dire cases and all the, the mass amount of mortality and whatnot. So they're just... Uh, uh, based on the couple of study or, or a little more of the number of studies that FDA has seen uh, so far, they're going to let it pass and be used in the general public mm -hmm. for the time being. This is a temporary thing, right? Emergency That's, authorization. Yes. Is this something that it's because it is proven to be effective? It's not something like Moderna, right? Where it, you know, there are suspicions that it was only being announced to drive up the stock prices right. or political sort of um, maybe um, reasonings behind that as well. I'm this not, is proven? Well, well yes. It, well, this, this particular one, the, mm -hmm. the, the remdesivir ha has been proven. Uh, to be effective in the amount that I just uh, said. Right. Uh, Moderna, on the other hand, it, I can't really compare those two because Moderna has never been formally studied by a third party um, labs or, mm -hmm. or um, uh, formal studies. Uh, so we have no choice but 
to believe what Moderna has stated so right. far. And, and I do believe that they have shown the effect that they have claimed to be. Uh, it's just that uh, there is a little um, shortness of mm. the proof that we currently only see. Only 45 patients yes, were yes, tested, actually. Yes, not only the numbers, but also uh, in the amount of neutralizing antibodies that they came up True. with. Mm. So we still would have to wait a little more mm-hmm. to find out more about the Moderna. And Korea, mi- meanwhile, has mentioned that um, it is intending to import r e m d e s i v i r Mm-hmm. to treat those patients that we right. have here in Korea as well. Right. And I think that's a very good idea at this point because they have shown some proof here. All right. Yeah. There are a lot of studies that are continuing to come out about um, coronavirus. Um, there were some strange symptoms also that we heard. We heard about um, the, the strange illness that was, seemed to be afflicting children as mm-hmm. well. We heard that there maybe were a couple of cases here in Korea. Mm-hmm. And then there were something called COVID toes. Right. Um, this was actually, I remember hearing about this maybe even a month or so ago too. These seem to be kind of very purplish or kind of discolored toes, maybe painful as well. Tell us about this and what do these strange symptoms, what do they mean? So um, I believe it was about two, three weeks ago that I probably mentioned something in regards Mm -hmm. to this. Um, The COVID-19 in comparison to all the other viruses that we had so far is Uh, what uh, the significance, well, I can't say significance, but what's so different about it is that it seems to be causing what's called a coagulopathy, meaning it creates these blood clots Mm -hmm. inside uh, uh, arteries and veins that blocks the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. The uh, COVID toes probably came from that. It probably blocked out the the vessel that's uh, supplying blood to the toes, and that's how it uh, created the purplish color. Mm -hmm. Uh, But also, uh, uh, in in many patients in the U.S. and Europe, we're... uh, seeing a lot of uh, these people coming in with um, um, uh, myocardial uh, ischemia, meaning uh, heart uh, infarction Mm -hmm. uh, and also brain infarction, uh, meaning that uh, those are usually caused by the coagulopathy. Um, So COVID-19, instead of causing all these respiratory symptoms or gastrointestinal symptoms, it seems to be also causing uh, very dire symptoms. Um, coagulative problems here. Mm -hmm. So that could be regarded as another symptom. It's just uh, that the blood clot that you mentioned. Right. Okay. Um, There was another study about um, that people who had suffered from SARS or maybe another sort of coronavirus will have built up some sort of um, antibodies to it. Maybe not exactly to the COVID-19, but some sort of related thing that makes us stronger and may lead to more asymptomatic patients as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And that... I. think was related to then the greater number of asymptomatic patients that probably are out there, 30 to 40 percent are being kind of quoted in various studies. Mm -hmm. What is your take on this, that if we maybe if we had maybe suffered a lot more colds when we were younger, does that make us stronger against the COVID-19? Well, my uh, pediatrician friend always used to tell me regarding uh, uh, when my children were going through colds that uh, once or twice they get uh, more and more they get uh, colds colds Uh and sicknesses, they're going to grow stronger from Mm it. Um, it, There was another study yet uh, from China probably um, that uh, there was up to 40% of cross reactivity from general coronavirus against COVID-19. What's cross-reactivity, Dr. Park? Meaning, if a person was to have had a certain coronavirus-related sickness, Mm -hmm. common cold most usually, or even in extreme cases, SARS. Or MERS. Or Mm -hmm. MERS. um, That person would have built up some sort of antibodies that could fight... let's say 30-40% possibility against Mm COVID-19. They were saying that, um, so for the elderly, they would also have had that, but the fact that they are not able to fight off the virus, Mm -hmm. this one, so well, is because they're weakened immune systems to begin with. That's a possibility, Mm -hmm. but I would also think that uh, antibodies tend to decrease over the time. So let's say 20-30 years have passed. Mm -hmm. They could have sort of lost uh, the antibodies against coronavirus. All right. Not much time, doctor. I just Mm -hmm. wanted to ask, it's very hot these days. Um, The regular sort of K80, 94, they are hard to breathe. They become very humid. Is it okay to wear these dental masks? Are they effective, just as effective? I wouldn't say just as effective, but it's still better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And they do the main job, right? Of catching those respiratory droplets. Yes, and also blocking out all the droplets. So definitely do go ahead and wear any sort of mask if possible. Right. And a reminder to our listeners that starting today, you don't have to go on the last digit of your birth year. You are able to get those um, sort of official masks at the... 
the um, pharmacy anytime now Mm -hmm. and just get those three masks. Thank Mm -hmm. you very much once again, Dr. Kwok. Thank you for having me. I'll see you next week. 